There are plenty of bad cartoons out there. Whether independently produced, less well known, or mainstream shows that just weren't that great, there have been plenty of cartoons out there that have either disgusted, disappointed, or even in some cases, downright angered cartoon fans around the world. But that doesn't mean that every bad or disappointing show out there had to be bad, and it certainly doesn't mean that some of these shows were premised off of bad ideas that were destined to fail. With a little bit better of an execution, these shows could have thrived right out of the gate, and some of them even could have been the next hit show or the next big thing. What's up guys, it is Zach here and today we are counting down our picks for the top 10 awful cartoons that could have been great. Before we get started, I just want to clarify that I'm excluding sequels or spin-offs from the list, so don't exactly expect the Teen Titans Goes to the World to make an appearance on this list. Alright, enough jibber jabbering. On to number 10. Chop Saki Chooks. I feel really bad about calling Chop Saki Chooks an awful show, and out of all of the shows on this list, it's without a doubt the best one. Instead of being a bad show, however, the problem with Chop Saki Chooks was more or less the fact that it squandered a really cool idea with some really fixable problems. The show centered around three kung fu chickens who battle an evil piranha with ape-like minions in control of a shopping mall-like city, and if that's not one of the coolest things you've ever heard in your life, then I'm sorry but I don't know what is. The animation, designs, ideas, and action in the show were all very well done, and K.O. Joe, also known as that chicken with the afro, is one of the coolest characters I've ever seen. But the show was definitely not able to reach its full potential, with its characters being a little too one-dimensional, there being way too much filler instead of playing it out like a simple action show, and it even being accused of coming off as racist, which I do think is pretty ridiculous. However, with these few changes, Chop Saki Chooks really could have been a cult hit that steered Cartoon Network at a time when the Cartoon Reel era was starting to reel its ugly head. Rocket Monkeys. Any show with monkeys in space is bound to be an eccentric show, and that was no different a case in terms of the Rocket Monkeys. The Canadian Teletoon animation centered around two monkey brothers Gus and Wally and their adventures in space, and more often than not, the interactions between the two's completely different personalities resulted in a side-splitting dynamic in a show filled with bright colors, creative characters, and a pretty ingenious plot. However, the show's tendency to slip towards extremely gross-out gags and flat-out weird imagery is where the show grossly failed, pun intended. The show was also pretty loud, sometimes in a funny way, but sometimes in a rather annoying way. Consider the show to be a much better version of Nickelodeon's former show Breadwinners, but one that could have turned into a really, really good show for young teens and older children. Almost Naked Animals Any show that puts intense focus on naked yet somehow hairy animals is one that's probably not going to succeed even with the stronger of 8 year old stomachs, and even though I really enjoyed my fair share of gross out shows when I was a kid, this was one of those gross outs that seemed to be rather annoying than actually funny. However, shave these characters and get rid of perhaps what is the worst theme song I've ever had to sit through in my entire life. I mean seriously, listen to this garbage. And this is one that might have gone over much better with the general public. Squirrel Boy. Remember this show? Starring larger than life squirrel Rodney and smaller than life boy Andy, this was a show that was severely overhated but also could have used a few improvements. Rodney was a bit of an annoying character and Andy was a rather bland little boy, and in episodes where they were not featured together predominantly, Rodney's overbearing personality could not be cancelled out by Andy and vice versa, resulting in a show that could be criticized as being boring and annoying at the same time. 
However, the show was not nearly as bad as people made it out to be, and dished out its fair share of episodes with a lot of charm, but its bad aspects and episodes were bad enough to give it a negative connotation in cartoon history. Tweak the personalities of the main characters a little bit though, and have them together more often, and the show unleashes its full potential and goes down as a much better show. Clarence Have you ever watched a show that you wanted to like, but just could not make yourself do it in the end? Well, there's Clarence in a nutshell for many cartoon fans since 2014. There's nothing downright unlikable about the character, and the show centers around the charming interactions and adventures of the young protagonists, but the show more or less feels like I'm just watching annoying kids from my elementary school in cartoon form more than anything else. Clarence is spoiled and pretty annoying. Jeff is that weird neat freak kid who you feel like just punching in the face after the first five minutes, and Sumo is the over-the-top troublemaker kid who gets old after the first five minutes. The show really feels more real than cartoon-like and feeds off of the awkwardness of its characters more than outright cartooniness, and while there is a charm to it, its awkwardness is more or less played out in an annoying fashion that just makes you feel that these kids are a bunch of Rats. Nothing is too bad about the show, and you can definitely see the potential in it, but if these characters were made to be just a little bit more likable, Clarence may appeal to more of an audience and break out as an even better show. The Problem Solvers There are some shows that are destined to fail as soon as they hit the air. Many people may feel as though The Problem Solvers was one of these shows, but the idea itself was not actually that bad, and with a few major, and granted major, fixes, it could have been a show that was actually salvageable. Get rid of the seizure-inducing animation, have actual plots that are played out in an adventurous light throughout 11 minutes, and make the character of Alfe more humorous instead of a living headache, and this is a show that could appeal to the young male teen demographic and could have made its weird character designs and jokes work for it instead of against it. Breadwinners If for some reason you haven't heard of this show, let me sum up the infamous breadwinners for you. Take rocket monkeys, change them to birds, and amp up the intensity to about a 573, and you've pretty much got breadwinners. Turn that down to about a 10, and you've actually got a pretty creative idea for a show. I still don't know if I think that the background ducks with the googly eyes are creative touch or just plain lazy by the animators though. It had a pretty cool intro and theme song though. Pickle and Peanut When you watch the theme song for this show, you realize that it can either be A, a pretty funny show that's almost like a meme, or B, a level 10 cringe fest. Now, having a show about a pickle and peanut having wacky adventures would normally get a big thumbs up from the younger version of myself, but this show takes that concept and instead of playing it out in a funny manner, plays it out in a rather weird, annoying, and as I said earlier, cringe-like way. The show actually is funnier and has better animation than it gets credit for though, and the characters themselves are actually not that bad when you give the show a try. Fix up some of these minor issues and present the show in a way that doesn't automatically make it look like the next Breadwinners-esque show to avoid on television, and you've got a pretty iconic show that can thrive in an 11 minute time frame or even as a short between other shows. Mr. Meaty <sighs> When I say that Mr. Meaty is probably my least favorite show of all time, I'm not kidding or trying to exaggerate. Like most kids, the show scared the living daylights out of me as a 5 year old kid, and its hideous animation and vulgar humor makes you wonder why in the world it was even shown to 5 year olds in the first place. I honestly just can't make up any excuses for this show, and I just can't get around how unbelievably ugly these puppets were. However, once you can get around the faces of these freaks, which is pretty hard I might add, 
The humor of the show could have struck a tune with teenagers and young adults. Switch the network, make the humor a little bit funnier, and seriously, and I mean seriously, clean up the animation and design to the puppets at least just a little bit, and you've got a pretty good short to air in between other shows. Sanjay and Craig Sanjay and Craig was a show heavily criticized for two things during its run. The fact that it looked like a ripoff of Bob's Burgers and its overuse of the fart joke. However, ignoring the fact that I think the animation wasn't exactly that close to that of Bob's Burgers, what a lot of us seem to forget was that the show actually had a ton of potential. The show could be very funny, had characters that fit many interesting archetypes, and had its own unique style, and the animation and voice acting were both pretty good. Sanjay's dad was a hilarious character that was robbed of being a meme icon in pop culture, and Sanjay and Craig could actually be pretty enjoyable guys most of the time. Yeah, the show used a lot of fart jokes, but gross out humor isn't bad when it's utilized in a proper way, and there were times when the show did use it in a funny way. One episode that really highlighted the show's potential was the fourth overall episode, Heightmere, and I recommend you check it out if you haven't seen it already. I myself was a fan of the show for quite a while, before I eventually just gave up on it because it was going too down the drain. Sanjay and Craig was a show that really could have been more fondly remembered, and if it just toned down its use of gross out humor and disgusting imagery, and instead focused more on the antics of the two main characters, then you easily have one of Nickelodeon's best shows of the 2010s decade. Welp, there you have it, the top 10 awful cartoons that could have been great. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have yourself an epic life. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time. Adios.